So, boys and girls, weather report for August 2nd, 2020. I think it's Sunday. I have no idea what day it is these, these days. I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to deal with Raw Matt. He wrote this book, The New Young Earth Creation Model. And we went through it last night on Saturday Night at the Atheist. We didn't get too far. My audio on StreamYard is doing weird, garbly things, and I have no idea. So the audio for me was really bad last night. And then when I tried to correct it, thought it was my fan, so I screwed something up, and the whole thing went to hell. So we didn't get that far. We went into his chromosome idea and his pyramid idea, and it was pretty weird. Worth watching. Uh, sophistry. Uh, misleading on purpose basically to to promote his crazy religious ideas that's what he's doing he doesn't give a shit about reading papers or really looking into the science behind anything he's considered some kind of great scientist among the standing for truth brain trust and when you look at the stuff that he comes up with that is really shocking because this man knows less than the rest of them. Uh, he has some words and he has some presentations and some really bad pictures and that's about it. He doesn't look into anything. So, so on page 140 he says, evolutionists say to suggest that global biodiversity arose in a few millennia from a handful of species is to imply a genuinely laughable rate of evolution. And then he says, fail. What he gives you as an example is these mouflon sheep. In 1957, a single pair of mouflon sheep were left on one of the Kerguelen Islands, Kerguelen Islands? Near the Antarctic Circle. In 1977, when they had returned, the number had grown to 700 sheep. That's just 20 years stuck on a small island and male sheep are nomadic travelers by nature so the conditions were not even suitable for them. There's no basis for that part. Uh, there's no reason to suspect that the conditions were not suitable for them as we'll point out here a little bit later. And let's see, and given that the population began with only two individuals, has experienced cyclical changes in the population size and was isolated on an island. The researchers, and he puts in parentheses, because of their belief in evolution, <laughs> predicted this should not have occurred, yet it did. Well, there was no prediction about the population size on that island that I can find anywhere. There were no evolutionary or evolution biased researchers that were like oh my god how did this happen we just don't get it the truth of the matter is is that uh, these mouflon sheep are have been studied on this island for quite a while because they represent a laboratory setting for a isolated population and what they found in the first paper that i found with uh Kufer is, I think, uh, an author in both of these papers. What they found is that there was an amazing amount of heterozygosity because coming from two sheep, they would expect a, a kind of an inbred population. And what they concluded is that it was a result of natural selection having a bigger part than genetic drift than they had previously thought or than some models predicted. So it was interesting, they have a lot of heterozygosity and the population is fine. But then when you look at, there's another study here where they looked at what happened to the population and this is like 1970. So here's a population, it's around, uh, looks like it's around 160. And then they introduced, what is it? 12 new fodder grasses and the population took off. And there's a couple of interesting Wikipedia articles, Eruptive Growth and the Mouflon, where they talk about this uh, specific little population of sheep, which is uh, a very interesting one indeed. Now, later on, he 
and we covered some of this last night, he has this crazy idea that the uh, animals, the mouflon sheep, hopped off the ark and had, or all of his examples have more chromosomes, and as they evolve, they get less and less chromosomes. He implies that they actually lose chromosomes, which is pretty much bullshit, you know. There's no evidence of chromosomes just disappearing. The guy is... He's, he he is, I'm not going to say it. Anyway, the ancestral sheep is presumed to have 60 chromosomes, as in goats, and the mouflon and domestic sheep have 54. This is in contrast to the Argali and Uriel, which have 56 and 58 chromosomes, respectively. If the Uriel is closely related to the mouflons, as the DNA, mitochondrial DNA indicate, then two chromosomes would need to have split during its evolution away from the mouflon. So chromosome splitting and chromosome fusion happens, and this is just something we knew about, you know, and we do know about, and we see in a lot of different species, and Ramad is making these crazy claims, but that is, that is one-fourth or one-half, less than one-half of one page of this damn book. And it takes about an hour to put together a presentation with all of the information and the papers linked. And I will put all the links in my description to combat this crazy claim that he pulled out of his ass, apparently. But a population growing has nothing to do with breaking into multiple species, which is what he started out to debunk, apparently. Uh... And that's, this whole book is filled with nothing but misinformation. Every one of his videos are filled with misinformation. And we are going to have to take it apart piece by piece. We need more foot soldiers. Anyway, so uh, yesterday we had some videos. Uh, Steve Bauman did a video on a cat that he had for 20 years that he lost. And it's a wonderful little video reflecting on Ezra's life. He's mentioned him before. We had a cat for 20 years, uh, Eugene. Uh, Eugene was a she, but my friend named her before we knew what sex Eugene was. So anyway, so we called her Yui and we lost her after 20 years. But this video really hit home with me. And then Eric and Dr. Fuzzrana After Show on Dapper Dino's channel is worth checking out. That happened yesterday. And then Standing for Truth had a, the I think maybe I mentioned this yesterday, Nephilim Free versus Ron Garrett. So that's there. And we had last night, we had the Saturday Night at the Atheist where we tried to go through uh, and forgive the audio again. I'm trying some different tools, I think. I'm going to get rid of StreamYard if they don't shape up. Every other time I record on StreamYard, I end up with this weird, garbly alien sounds, and I think it's crosstalk from their uh, servers or something. Whatever they're doing out there. Anyway, I think that's about it. So Saturday Night at the Atheist, where we get together... And we are non-believers, and we be up to no good, and we talk about the believers. And it's a little bit raw. Nobody should watch it, I don't think, unless you want to pick up the tidbits of information that we went over. So in the coming week, I believe I'm going to have a hangout with somebody on A-Bio. Uh, next week, I'm supposed to debate uh, Gavin Hur Hurleman from standing for truth channel i have no idea what his background is but the debate is going to be evolution versus creationism uh it's going to be on my channel i don't know how it's going to go the a bio thing should be on wednesday we're trying to set that up with rj donard and with a man who actually uh wrote papers on abiogenesis and he has a very interesting thing interesting things to tell us so i think that's about it guys Maybe see you tomorrow.